Okay, the next thing is, this is from Peter Menard, Pacifica, California. This is a very lengthy and involved one, and I just happen to have an answer for this today, so that's pretty cool. Before asking my question, I just want to say thank you for describing and for your decision-making process in your videos. You always qualify information you share in regards to where it is on the spectrum from well-supported scientific evidence. Thank you. I always try to underpin what information I put out with actual studies that are ongoing, or I'll just say, it's just my opinion. Anyway, I typically lose most of my colonies every September through November. Lose most of my colonies every September through November. So this is no small thing. Over the past few years, I've done many of the standard things to encourage the health of my colonies going into our fall dearth, including tweaking my varroa treatment approaches in response to more specific indicators managing resources available to the bees and making splits and catching swarms from hives that have survived a year or more. Working from home during the pandemic this year provided me the opportunity to make daily observations during the heat of the day instead of in the cool of the morning and evening. What I saw was quite a wake-up call, a two-month war with relentless yellow jackets. I had observed them during previous years, but never in the numbers and with the persistence I was able to witness during the day while being home. Previous years, when I caught the yellow jackets gaining access to the hives, and during those morning and evening times, my assumption was that they were mainly taking advantage of the hives already on the way out because I missed opportunities to intervene with their problems. I don't know how much responsibility they ultimately deserve for my losses each year, but they are definitely not helping. So, this year, after also seeing my wasp traps fill repeatedly without making a dent in the numbers at the hives, I'm determined to find additional ways to keep them from harassing my bees. Quick note, during warm, dry years with no late fall cold snap, we are seeing yellow jackets year-round here. I put out some frames for my bees to clean up just a week ago, and sure enough, within a few hours, there were some yellow jackets midst the bees collecting the honey on the frames in late January! Exclamation point. One of the strategies I've been considering has been under floor entrances. There are beekeeper testimonies online suggesting that they are much more difficult for a yellow jacket to access than a horizontal entrance and give the guard bees an additional upper hand. Are you aware of any evidence for this? I have been resistant to using them because I really value the ability to observe landing board activity, but then I thought that maybe I could combine a landing board with a vertical underfloor entrance, preserve the ability to observe the bees, and get some of the yellow jacket deterring effect in the vertical hive access. This would also enable me to take care of some of the other things I don't like about traditional bottom boards, like add a small tilt to the landing board to shed water, use a substantial piece of wood for below the screen insert rather than the flimsy corrugated polypropylene and eliminate corners in which debris accumulates around the under screen. That's the insert there. Here's a link to the sketch and he sent a really nice, you know, CAD type sketch of the entrance board and what's going on. And this is really interesting because I've been thinking about the same stuff. We get, and not on this scale though, this is a lot of loss when it comes to the wasps attacking. And I have video after video of yellow jets attacking. And last year, even the European hornets making their appearance on very cold days. So the advantage always goes to the yellow jackets, to the wasps. So even the European hornet, which is the only hornet that's here in the United States, except for the Asian giant hornet that's made an appearance in the state of Washington that everybody's all excited about. But uh, yellow jackets are smaller and they do attack in mobs. So I've given a lot of thought to that because I was also listening to a guy that was talking about, you know, the mushrooms and how those might benefit the bees. And he made a comment when he was talking about that because we're talking about the microbiome of the bees. So it's a totally different thing, nutritional benefit and so on. But he's designing a feeder to put out to get those mushroom, those uh, nutrients out to the bees. And they don't want them to be robbed by yellow jackets and other wasps. So 
What he said was, bees are maze runners. Wasps are not. So he, he and I wrote right away, by the way, I've subscribed to that uh, mushroom research channel and everything else because I want that information. I wrote and I said, when you get that feeder out, send me one because I want to see it because it seems cool. And it would be great to be able to put out feed as described here that doesn't get robbed by wasps right along with the bees. But here's the other thing. Now we're talking about at the hive. And I've thought about this too, because I thought, well, if there's some kind of weird entrance design that would benefit the bees, but not the wasps, that would be cool to put that on your beehive. And I understand a hive opening in the bottom that benefits the bees and not the wasps. You know, wasps go into every angle. I don't necessarily see that alone as a huge advantage because um, I've seen wasps. Wasps are backdoor robbers. You know, they come at the sides. They'll dive straight down into a hole. They'll go up into a hole. So when we see wasp behavior, they exploit any opening that they can find. So I was thinking about that maze thing and all of that. Well, anyway, long story short, I do have a solution for Peter. And this thing, this came in the mail today because I've been looking into this. This is a channel and you're going to look at this and think, yeah, whatever. But I'm going to be testing this this year and I'm going to be testing it for a lot of reasons. So I'm going to put this in at least half of my beehives. And this is something that comes out of New Zealand and it was presented at Apamandia by the inventor who decided that where they live in New Zealand, they have a wasp problem that is well beyond anything described even here. More wasps and they can devastate entire colonies of bees, even the strong ones, because when do the wasps fly? And I've made these videos too, and it always is so frustrating. You get out there, as described by Peter here, go out there early in the morning. The wasps, the bees are still semi-clustered. It's a cold day, even in you know September, for example, which, by the way, is when the wasps are at their peak demand because they're making queens, and the queens are going to have to survive winter. So when they're making queens, they're feeding their babies animal protein, and they're going to get stuff. And then the queens that have hatched out are also intense because they need to fatten up in order to get through winter, so they're after the nectar. So it's a full-spectrum assault. Anyway, the... The type of thing that I was thinking about, whether it's a some kind of serpentine channel, because guess what? I have an observation hive too, and the entrance comes in at the bottom, 90 degree turn, and then it goes up into the hive. Guess what never goes in there? Yellow jackets. So when we add a configuration, and that's a long tube, by the way, an inch and a half in diameter tube. So what this is, it's called a hive gate. And I'm gonna put a link to this down in the video description because I have a special ask. Like I said, they just came today, so I haven't tested them, but I've read about it and I watched the presentation. And I like the idea that what this is, is a long channel. So when this goes to the entrance, the bees come and go, and then they can vent through here underneath the cluster inside the hive. So this is also a Four Seasons style entrance. Because when we've seen the wasps get in, when they do, when it's really cold and the bees aren't down there yet, they scoot through the entrance and they shuffle along the side, and they go up and they have this advantage, they start robbing out the colony right away. Then by the time the bees warm up, there's a bunch of wasps in there. Why? Because the scout wasp showed up first, found the resource, found a not so well protected colony of honeybees in this beehive, and then when it went in and got its resources, it took off and zipped back, and when it came back, it had 10 of its friends with it, and then 20 of its friends, and then 30 and so on. So now we've got a mass of bees. So by the time it warms up and these bees wake up, the attack is already happening, and now we have dead bees and dead wasps all over the landing board. So what this inventor is working on and has done is created a very simple appearing solution. If a wasp comes to the entrance, and they come with these metal entrance guards that go over the top of it, but it works with wooden ones and stuff, and the flow hive, there's two little blue entrances up there in that flow hive too, because that has a little narrow entrance. So I tuck some of these in there to see if they would fit. So they do, they fit all my hives. So you don't have to have this metal piece, but I thought if I'm going to evaluate it, I'm going to get everything that this company makes to try it out. And this is a heavy piece of galvanized steel. Anyway, and it has two settings. So this goes on your landing board. You can have two of these together. So they go like that. 
and you'd have another one on the other side, or you can flip it and just have a single. And then you notice that it has this long thing, which is long lines of what I was thinking, why not have a really long entrance and make these wasps run the gauntlet? Because that wasp now can't just scoot through the entrance and shuffle off to the side, he has to go through this full length. And what's gonna be over here, because under the cluster, that's the warmer spot inside your lower box, which is generally your brood box. And then he's going to have to engage bees right in here. And this is pretty well thought out because now that I have it in hand, the surface is all textured so the bees can get their grips on it. They can get their feet well. Um, they can hold on to it really well because sometimes I've seen bees when they're trying to vent a hive and they're holding a really smooth landing board, which because I've put a high finish on some of my beehives, even while they're venting, their feet are kind of gradually sliding and then they have to move forward. So this has a texture because where are they going to be venting if you have a single entrance on your hive? Right through these. So this is set up, they have two of them. Now here's the other thing. Why not just make a solid bottom board and have a groove cut into it with a router or something? And then the bees will have this control area, right? And then you just put some kind of solid cover on it so we make these channels. Uh, one of the reasons is because in the winter time, when you have this here and the clusters over here, on the southeast side of my hives, the clusters tend to shift over to that side, whatever gets warmest in the morning, for example. So then what happens is with these is through that opening, you can actually tilt this so that this opening remains under the cluster, not to the cold unoccupied part of that bottom box. So this moves over here. Now this is all theory for me because all I did was read it, look at their videos, and I'm gonna put a link down to their YouTube too there's not a lot of explanation on YouTube, but the company's called BIQ. So if you've heard of them or if you've tried anything like this, please write your comments down below because I'm dying to hear about it. The other thing is I want Peter to get a couple of these. And if you do, and if it doesn't solve the wasp problem, I'll pay for it. I'll pay you back. So whatever you paid for this stuff, if you get a bunch of them and they don't work, just for you, not for everybody watching because I can't afford to buy everybody one of these. But there's a patent pending on it, and I like all the stuff I read. I like the Apomondia presentation, and the people at Apomondia that bought these there, uh, some people tried to replicate them out of other materials, and then they later came and bought the actual one. These are just made out of a type of plastic that's UV um, resistant and stuff like that. But anyway, um, they were really happy and it saved them. So here's the other thing I'm wanting to know about. So this is just me now. Forget the company that made them and stuff, but this is a ready-made, easy to get channel to get this going. So I thought when we have the bees robbing, we usually put a robbing screen in front. Oh man, I didn't see my robbing screen. The white robin screens from Bee Smart Designs. The bees come out and they go up through the top and sometimes though even the robbers because the robbers are often honeybees they don't have a hard time figuring out that opening and getting in there and then there's a big wide area with those robbing screens the bees that are resident to the hive have this big wide area to defend so i've never really liked that i mean it worked um but could it have worked better so don't get mad at me if you're bee smart designs people but I think this channel, making them walk the gauntlet, actually is more effective because guess what else happens? Happen to get their mock-up. So here's the box and this is how it would look in there. And this is how that entrance would look if you had a single. And this of course would not be open because you have your front of your beehive on here and it's held on here by little screws. I have not tested it. I'm not saying it works. I'm saying I like the theory. So then this thing sticks into the hive, well into the hive. So let's say a wasp went in there or a robber honeybee, one of the scouts, because that's when we want to get them. We want to get them when just the scouts are getting there, not once they bring in a whole attack party, an attack team that comes in strong. Anyway, they scoot through here. Let's say it's a wasp, gets through. Oh, there's a bee. Oh, there's a bee. Gets through, gets in here, scoots out, gets into the hive. Now it's running around. Now the other bees have realized that it's there, they're warm enough, and they start chasing the wasps. Where does wasps go to get out? They're dumb. They're not like bees who can memorize where they went out, 
went in and how they can get back out. So now that wasp is running around all over the place, being chased by bees and it can't get out. Do we really want to keep it in there? Yeah, we do, because if it dies, it can't go home and communicate to the other wasps where this resource is so they don't come back. Same thing for those big, strong colonies that send out their attack teams. And those scout bees get in there. Let's say they get on the landing board. They don't get a... Because now the bees are on equal footing because they're all awake. If there's bees flying to attack, there are some differences in the lines of bees, the stock of bees, and their ability to fly earlier than others and things like that. But if all things were equal... If they're scouting on the landing board, then these guys in this colony are awake too. But they still try to get in. The strongest colonies go after the lesser colonies. But they don't want to waste their lives and they don't want to waste their resources. They go for the easy pickings. So this is why I say don't put these on all the hives because I won't know the difference. So I got a bunch of them. I'm going to put them on half my hives. And I'm going to see what's going on because it just makes sense. If that scout bee gets on a landing board and has to go through one of these tubes and it encounters a bee right here, it's getting out of there. They don't want to fight because they either die or the bee that's a resident bee dies stinging them. So we created a defensible area. And it's interesting. So for robbing of the bees, and so do you have to take it out? No, I guess you don't. Because the bees will know that this is their entrance and exit point. What happens if this is a tree and there's a cavity of bees in there? This, this made me think about a lot of stuff. Because the entrance to our beehive is three quarters of an inch thick. Or it's seven eighths, for example, if it's one of those Hoover hives that I got. Because they're thicker, it seems. But uh, most bee trees are thick. And I was talking to um, Sven, the guy that's doing the the Asian giant hornets, and they got that hornet's nest out of the tree. He zoomed with our bee club, the Northwest Pennsylvania Beekeepers Association. So if you're in Northeast Ohio, if you're in Northwest Pennsylvania, or if you're in Western New York, and you want to join a bee club, Northwest Pennsylvania Beekeepers Association. There, I plugged it, see. All right, but here's the thing. The thickness of the tree has a small entrance, and that entrance goes through the thickness of the outer wall of the tree. So that is a defensive mechanism, a physical defensive mechanism, that whatever wants to attack a feral colony of bees in a bee tree has to go through a longer corridor to get in there. Therefore, there's more opportunity to encounter guard bees, and then they won't make it in. So I think this, to some degree, imitates that. Anyway, if you get one of these, and you try one of these, let me know. I'm actually going to make a page on uh, the waytobee.org on the website. And it's going to say Hive Gate or whatever it's called. And I will post what you tell me your experiences are on there if you're going to get one of those. So I'm going to test it throughout 2021. I can't wait to make videos about it. The guy that invented it did a glass bottom beehives, did a couple of glass bottom beehives and they made observations with cameras and special lighting underneath the hive so they could see the behavior of wasps. What they did was they cut out this bottom portion of this so that when they're looking through the glass this is an open channel from underneath and they could see what the behavior is and how wasps behave. So that's on the YouTube channel. Anyway, you can check that out because it convinced me and it's not a huge investment so what do I have to lose? So that's what I'm trying out, and that's what I'm going to tell Peter. Get those. If they don't work, not only will I pay for that, I'll give you one of these field guide to honeybees and their maladies if it doesn't work. So just send me an email. The honor system. Fred, they didn't work. Pay, me, pay up or whatever. Show me what you paid. I'll pay you back. That's how convinced I am that it's going to be a cool thing. Anyway, that's one of the things I'm reviewing this year. Hivegate at... Uh, B-I-Q Solutions. So I'll put the link down in the video description. Check it out, tell me what you think.